everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week three of the 2021 Fiberflux Spring Crochet Along. We are hard at work on this gorgeous spun sugar cardigan. Now for week one, we talked about the project itself, a little bit about what we would be doing, the materials, um, kind of brushed up um, on the sizing. And for week two, we learned how to make these beautiful V-stitch panels that um, are the main part of the sweater. So today for week three, we're gonna be kind of constructing everything and putting it all together. So we're gonna be seaming up under the arm on either, either side. I'm gonna show you how to um, put it on and kind of like mark where you want the spots to be, where to seam. And we're also going to seam up the inside of the back the, for the panels. Um, to join at the back. So we'll be, uh, by doing that, we'll create the neck hole and the opening for the wrap front part of the sweater as well. And then finally, we're gonna be weaving in some ends and just kind of wrapping the project up. So before we jump right in, I wanted to tell you that if you haven't joined our Ravelry group and our Facebook group to hop on over there and join the makers for the crochet alongs. Uh, we have seasonal ones like this one, but we also have year long ones. We have a temperature one going on. We have a, a granny stash down project to use up odds and ends you may have laying around. And we always have a charity challenge going on as well. So hop on over there, um, both Ravelry and Facebook, and I'll put the links down below as well. So let's get started. So as you're finishing up your two panels that you'll need, make sure that they are exactly the same length. Um, make sure this one is the same exact length as this one. And to take it a step farther, make sure that they have the same number of rows. So each panel was 122 rows of this V stitch. So this one was 122 rows and this one was 122 rows. So they are going to um, not only be the same length, but they're going to uh, line up perfectly as well. Okay, so we are gonna do some seaming today and some finish work today, and then our beautiful cardigan is gonna be finished. So what I've done is I've kind of held this up by putting the panels, I have both of my panels, remember they're the same exact length and the same number of rows that we've worked up. If you've missed any of the other tutorials, um, you can go back and learn how to make these panels. Um, but what I've done to kind of set us up for this is I put, now this is gonna be the top, this is the opening. So this is gonna be seamed. And then what we're gonna do is create some armholes. And I've clipped this just to mark my spot. So what you'll wanna do now at this point, and I'm gonna show you a photo so you can see what I'm talking about, but you'll want to throw one panel over a shoulder and one panel over a shoulder. Then make sure that the bottom edges are completely lined up. And then you'll want to come up here and make sure the armhole is large enough. And then where you want that seam to start, you can throw a stitch marker or a clip, clothespin, uh, tie a little piece of yarn on there, what have you. So we're gonna start on that first. We're going to seam under the arm all the way down. And then on the same, um, not the same, but the other side, the other panel, you're gonna do the same thing with your stitch marker. Right under the arm, you're gonna like clip your little spot here and that's gonna let you know where the armhole begins and where you have to seam, okay? Once we've done that, then we'll flip this over and sew the back up, okay? So let's put this panel aside for just a moment. And what we're gonna do, now remember last week when we did some of our um, crochet work, we had some uh, yarn left over. So we can use this for our seaming. If for any reason, when you made your piece that you don't have any yarn, just look for a yarn that will coordinate. You probably most likely have one of these colors laying around somewhere, okay? So remember, this is one panel and one panel. Before we proceed though, I promised I would show the photo of how this all configures. Let me show that really quick now. Okay, so I meant to show that a minute ago, but you can see how everything's laid out and where to clip everything and where everything's gonna be seamed, okay? 
So then what you want to do, now this V stitch, because we worked in rows and flipped our work, this is completely reversible. If you have a favorite side, choose it now. But otherwise, um, where you've clipped this, however you've done it with your yarn or your stitch marker or whatever, what you're going to do now is open it up. This is going to be the outside. So we're going to open it up to the inside and we're going to flip this over so we're going to be seaming the inside so it's a little bit nice a uh, little bit neater okay so once you've turned everything out this is our inside now we can grab some of our yarn and we're not going to worry about these ends right now we'll take care of all that at the end okay so what you'll want to do is make sure everything is lined up nice and neat now because this is self-striping our colors are changing so I do have a little bit of this color that I can start with and then I can change to the pinks and purples as I get farther up. It's up to you but it might show if the color is too different than um, what you're sewing it um, onto. So I'm going to get about oh I don't know 24 inches of yarn or so and I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and your seam will blend much nicer though if your yarn matches what you're seaming. All right, so line everything up nice and neat. And then what we're gonna do is go in this corner and we're gonna do a whip stitch seam. That is a very simple, pretty invisible seam. And we are going on the inside, so it'll be even more concealed. And I'm just gonna tie the yarn right on. Now all these ends that you see here, we're gonna worry about those later, okay? We're gonna deal with all the ends when we're done seaming everything. Okay, so we're just going to hold our two layers together like a sandwich. And we're going to go in both layers like this. And all the whip stitches is a nice, easy, simple spiral through your work. Okay, if you um, embroider, it's sort of like um, a running stitch. You're going, but you're making the yarn come around the work. Okay. So we're just gonna take this all the way up. Now when the colors start getting a little bit too much of a contrast, we can switch to some of these other yarn colors. But I'm just gonna work my seam all the way up to where my stitch marker is, okay? And I'm gonna stop and change my color when we start to get into the, like the pinks and the purples. I'll switch to a different color to seam. And that way it will be a little bit more blended looking. Okay, now what I also like to do when I'm seaming is because this is also kind of lacy, um, you want to be careful when you sew lace because you don't want it to show, okay? Sometimes it can look a little bit um, not as neat if you're not careful, okay? So what I like to do is before I get too far down, just open things up and as you can see, it looks nice. It looks very nice. But if it doesn't, if something looks off about it, then just pull it out and redo it. No big deal if you have to redo things. It's better to do it before you get too far along in your seaming and your project and you have to start over, okay? I like to work a few inches and then check while I'm still kind of in a, in a safe spot, right? So I'm just working my whip stitch all the way up. I'm gonna keep working this and actually let me take you to the purple because I'm gonna show you how to switch because we're gonna just try to get this a little bit um, as blended looking as possible. Now see this mint green that I'm using still kind of blends pretty well into this blue. So I'm not super worried about it right now, but when we start to get into the pink and purple, then we're getting like um, opposite colors on the color wheel. So it's gonna be much more of a contrast. So here I am heading into the purple. So what I'm gonna do is tie this off. Now this is totally personal. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm gonna tie this off just so my colors blend a little bit better and leave a tail about six inches long or so, so you can weave that in later. And what I'm gonna do is just grab a piece of this purpley pink color. Again, we'll do about 24 inches or so. Actually, this is more like 18 inches. And I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle. Okay, and then what we'll do is just continue on. So as we head into this purple, I'll just tie this right on here. And we'll just keep going up to the stitch marker, okay? So same thing, hold your fabric together like a little sandwich. And if you need to reposition as you go just to keep things nice and neat, you can do that. But I think switching to this more um, pinky yarn is gonna 
blend a little bit better, okay? So, now we are heading into an area now where I have purple on top and pink on the bottom. So, as you seem, just try to find the best color that will blend in, okay? This is sort of like in between the two colors, but just do the best that you can. Whatever you need to do to keep it as camouflaged as possible. You don't want all the seams to kind of be taking away from the beauty of the work, okay? So I'm gonna keep seaming, and then when we get to the stitch marker, um, we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to kind of finish it off, and then we'll do our other seams as well. Okay, I'm just coming up to my stitch marker, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come up right up against it. I'm not gonna take it out because I want to keep it in place so I know exactly how to line up the other one. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But when you get to that last stitch, just leave a little loose loop in there and run your needle through to tie it off. And then I like to do that one more time just to give it some extra reinforcement because it is something that you're gonna be wearing. So you wanna make sure it's nice and strong, okay? And then we'll just tie that off and we're gonna leave our stitch marker in there and our ends in place, okay? We're not gonna worry about the ends right now. So, we are just about done half of our sweater. We have an armhole now, okay? And I like mine a little bit open because it's a nice long sweater. Let me just zoom out so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. But here's my armhole, and you can see now it's seamed down the side. And let me just lay this down so you can see. And you might need to, uh, sometimes when you seam it, kind of pulls it in, you might wanna like, flatten it out a little bit. You can run a little bit of steam over this to kind of um, loosen it up a little bit if you want to. It will settle down as you wear it. All right, again, we'll deal with the ends um, at the end here. So next, what we're gonna do, and we've, we've already done this together, so I'm gonna let you go and do this off on your own, but before you get started, now I just threw a stitch marker in there just to, I threw it on myself and then kind of measured it and clipped it really quickly just so I could get an idea of where it goes. But now that you have one sewn on, what I would do is line your panels up. Now you can um, get this in the exact right spot one of two ways. The first way is you can count how many rows from your stitch marker up to the top of the one that's already sewn. Or you can simply take your two pieces, now I'll make sure at the bottom, like this other one, that they're perfectly lined up, and these are very nicely lined up, and then you'll wanna stack it. Make the folded edge line up at the top, just like that, and then make sure that your stitch marker is in the right spot, and see how they're let me zoom in. See how they're just right there, just stacked right on top of each other. Everything is very nicely lined up. So now I know that when I sew this one as well, this top one I haven't sewn yet, um, it will be lined up and I won't have two different size armholes. So you can just stack them and line them up or you can count rows to get a really precise measurement. Or you can take your, um, where is it, my tape measure and you can measure everything, okay? So get everything lined up and then sew that side the same way we did before, where you know you wanna open it up and sew it from the inside, uh, figure out what side that you like best. Um, if you have like, if you want this to be the inside for whatever reason and this to be the outside, it's totally up to you. So go ahead and make that second underarm seam. And then when we rejoin, we're gonna put our panels together, open them up, and then sew the back. So our, our uh, cardigan will have a back part as well. So go ahead and make that seam that we just did, but on the other panel, and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, our gorgeous sweater is really coming together. Now we have, um, we seamed the underarm of one side, I went ahead and did the other side, same way, and now I have it laid out. So this is gonna be the front. Now up here is where it folds, so that's our shoulders, and so it's gonna open here. So what we're gonna do now is take our piece and we're going to flip everything over. Now I went ahead once again and threw this on and located where I wanted the back to start, okay? So I sort of like marked it with a stitch marker. So let me just get it all laid out so I can show you what I mean. So we're, what we're gonna do is, 
seam the back. So this is going to be the back of our sweater, and we're going to run a seam uh, from the inside like we did before. Okay, so as you can see, I have a little stitch marker here so I know where to begin, and I'm going to just seam all the way down to the bottom. So this will be where um, your neck is, like the back of your neck. Okay, so let's, now that I show you the back, let's flip it back over. And I'm going to grab some yarn. And what we're going to do is open this up like this. So the front of our sweater is opened. And I'm going to sort of turn this just to make it a little bit easier to work on. So we have it all nice and opened up. And I'm going to grab my needle and a piece of yarn. And I just have to find the end of it here. I'm going to do about two feet like I did before, 24 inches and just cut. Now I don't know if that will take, that 24 inches will take me all the way, out to, way down to the bottom, but when I'm seaming, I like to not have a piece of yarn that's too terribly long, just so I can, um, it's a little bit more manageable. You can always um, get a new piece and keep going. If you want a really long piece and just do it all in one shot, then feel free to do that as well. All right, let me zoom in just a hair so you can see what I'm doing here. And I have my tapestry needle threaded and I'm going to fix this a little bit because I didn't realize when I threw this in that I went through one of the plies, just split it a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to hold it like a sandwich like I did before and just kind of line everything up. I'm going to start at the bottom because if I start here at the stitch marker and come down, my edges might be a little bit off. Okay, so I am going to start from the bottom like this and hold my two pieces together just like I did before and sandwich them together. Okay, so let me actually zoom out a little bit because this thing has grown quite a bit. All right, so go ahead and insert your needle. And actually, I know I already cut this. I'm gonna use this up top. Remember how we did before because it has like a fading color or not a fading, but like a changing color effect. Sorry about that. I should have done this a minute ago. Um, we start with our cool colors on the bottom and then we work our way up to the pinks and purples. So I'm going to just rethread this with a piece of this green just so it blends a little bit nicer. Okay, so what you're going to do is go in the bottom corners here and you're going to pull it almost all the way through, just like we did before. Tie the bottom, tie it, and tie it again. And then we're going to hold everything nice and neat sandwiched together, lined up perfectly, and we're gonna go through both layers with our whip stitch. Same thing we did before, but we're just going on the inside of our sweater up the back to the neck, wherever you marked your neck opening, okay? So I'm just gonna sew all the way up, and I am, once we get to these warmer colors, the pinks and the purples, I am gonna to switch to this pink that I cut a minute ago. That is a complete and total personal preference, but I do find that it blends a little bit better. If you have the yarn colors to do that, um, I happen to have some scraps when I finish my panels of warm and cool. So if you can do that, um, it, it will blend a little bit nicer for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and seam this all the way up. And when we rejoin, I'm gonna show you how it looks all seamed up and then we are gonna do a little bit of finish work and that is it. So super, this is such a super easy little cardigan. All right, so keep going with your seam all the way up the back, up to your stitch marker, starting at the bottom, working up and we'll rejoin in just a moment. Okay, friends, we are in the home stretch. I'm just gonna put, I, I tied my knot at the end here, see where my stitch marker is. I'm just going to go in one more time because those areas where pieces come together, you're going to have the most stress on those. It's going to be like when you put it on and take it off, it's, it puts the most stress on those. So um, if you need to do an, a couple extra knots in those like high stress pulling type areas, feel free to do that. Okay, I'm just going to leave this tail here. I'm not going to trim it or anything because it's fairly short. The next thing we need to do is take off, if you have stitch markers or clips or something like that holding your sweater together, go ahead and take those clips out. Uh, i got to find mine first. Um, I had two at either arm and one on the back part area. So let's open this back up and look at our lovely handiwork. 
And this is such a beautiful sweater and so super easy. Let me just zoom out so you can see. And I'm just gonna slide this over a little bit. Okay, so we have where our seam is in the back here and the front. So you're gonna get a little bit of like a flutter sleeve effect. And this is the back. You can see where we've seamed it up, which will be more invisible in the outside part. You can see our seams here, but when you turn them, they're less noticeable. Okay, so everything looks great. Everything's all nice and lined up. So just give it a quick check before you start weaving in ends. So I'm gonna grab my trusty needle one more time and let's tackle this one on the inside here real quick. Um, to do your ends, all you wanna do is make sure, just keep in mind, to try to get the end into the most coordinating part of your piece. So I'm just gonna kinda of go up the middle of the seam here through the purple with my pink tail. And try to stay in the back loops when you're on the inside weaving these tails in because it'll, um, on the outside it would look like just a pink line running through your work, okay? So try not to let that show. Try to keep it on the back, the inside loops if possible. And then I went in one direction, came back in the other direction just to kind of lock that tail into place. And then I'm gonna run this green tail down this part where the more cooler colors are hanging out. We have the warmer colors heading this way. All right, so I'm gonna go this way with my needle. And then I'm gonna come back up with my tail to help lock it into place. Okay, it'll just kind of keep it there. Okay, give it a little snip. And then I'm gonna kind of just go around my project here looking for more tails. You should have them a couple on each panel and where we seamed, okay? So let me just show you one more. This has just a little bit of purple down at the bottom, or I guess you could say magenta. This is more purple. Uh, but I'm gonna just stay in that same color area while I weave my tails in, just so everything blends nicely, okay? So I went in one direction with my tail, and I'm just gonna come back in the other direction with my tail. Give it a little snip. Straighten things out, and that's done, okay? So go through your entire piece, look for any tails that are left over, and get them woven in. Okay, so our ends are woven in, I've taken all the stitch markers out, and we are complete. So now that everything is done and seamed and looking beautiful, that wraps up our project. I did want to tell you a couple things, though, before we depart. Um, again, if you haven't joined our crochet along groups on Ravelry and Facebook, the links are down below to hop on and show off your work as you finish your project. But also um, use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to share your work on social media. It's so much fun seeing what everyone's doing. And then also, even though the tutorial instructional part of our project is finished, next week I always like to do sort of a roundup post of all the parts of the project. So that way if you want to make this project again or you haven't uh, started or you just kind of want everything in one place, I put all the parts of this tutorial on one post. So you can have week one, week two, and week three all in one place. So next week, all the parts of this will be in one spot and you can access them at any time. I hope you enjoyed this project. I had so much fun making this and so much fun with this beautiful yarn. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again.